Hello and welcome back to another Diabetic Witterings with a decent cup of breakfast tea on a day when we've got the rain pelting down. And commiserations to all those who follow football and apparently we didn't get anywhere yesterday. I'm recording this on the Monday. But I'm not here to talk about such things. Now I thought my last Witterings got quite a bit of interest from people talking about mainly food. <coughs> I had some very interesting comments from someone who's discovered that the best way for him to control his diabetes is by going to a Mexican diet. So high in maize, high in all kinds of Mexican food. That, that I thought was interesting. I have heard before that meals that are very high in chilli are better for diabetics. I don't know. But I thought it'd be interesting just to go through some of the basic stuff that I look at. Right, now, first of all, I've got to get this out of the way because I will forget otherwise. Don't forget, if you like this, hit the like button, hit the subscribe and all the other good things. And if you really want to support the channel, it would be very helpful if you went to the Patreon site and supported me that way but I'll leave that up to you at the end of the day this is really something I'm putting out just to try to help people like me who may not have been aware that they had diabetes because they had no symptoms but who have suddenly had a, the shock of their lives and been told that they are diabetic so that's the, that stuff out of the way right now what else can you look at now I'm just looking here at the Harvard site because we all know that, or we're starting to realise, that when you eat something like sugar, it causes a huge spike in sugars in your blood. That's not really rocket science. What many more of us are not aware of is that if you have various carbohydrates, that can have a similar effect. So, for example, rice, apparently, is just like eating sugar. It's absorbed so quickly and converted so quickly into sugar that it causes a massive spike in your blood sugars. Then again, you look at things like lentils and they are carbohydrate, but they have a much slower impact. And the reason for the difference is called the glycemic index. And basically what that means is the higher the glycemic index, the faster any conversion is going to happen. So white sugar would have a very, very high glycemic index. Brown sugar, considerably lower. And so brown sugar is a lot safer if, if you're going to be eating something. White pasta has a very high glycemic index, but brown pasta, much lower. So it's a case of trying to figure out not just quantities of carbohydrate you're eating, but the glycemic index within those carbohydrates. Now, I thought, I actually started out today that um, I thought it'd be interesting just to talk about foods a bit. And so I picked up some of the things that we've got in our food cupboards. Now, you won't be entirely surprised to know that someone like me, who is diabetic and has known about it for a couple of years, tends to not have too much food that's processed because it's processed foods that are causing a lot of harm to people and to the planet. There's one thing here that uh, I'll talk about in a little while. But in terms of nutritional information, these are biscuits, oat cakes, little thin biscuits. They're very appealing. They're jolly useful for me when I'm absolutely starving because they can beat off the hunger pangs very quickly. <coughs> And what I tend to do is I don't worry about what it says per 100 grams so much. All of the foods in, the, uh, in Europe, basically, will state nutritional information per 100 grams and then per serving. In this case, per oat cake. I don't worry about the 100 grams too much because it depends what you're eating, doesn't it? If I'm looking at a sauce, well, 100 grams of sauce is irrelevant. It's what a small... 10 cc serving is going to be like and generally the amount of sugar you have in a 10 cc serving of even tomato ketchup is so small it's not something I'm going to particularly bother about except I really don't like tomato ketchup so look at 
at the 100 grams, for example, energy per 100 grams is 445 calories, which is quite high. But look at per oat cake, and that's about 46 calories, so actually very little. In terms of fat, it's got, 100, uh, it's got 17 and a half per 100, which is 1.8 grams per oat cake, which in terms of fat, I'm not bothered about. Carbohydrate is 55.8, so 5.8 per oat cake. Well, that's quite high in carbohydrate, 5.8 grams. But then you look at how much of that is sugars and it's 0.1. So 0.1 grams per oat cake, which is very, very low. And then it has protein, salt and all the other stuff. So for me, that is really, really good. It's only 46 calories which is very low and it's only a tiny tiny quantity of sugar and then there's these things which are also very good for me in terms of reducing the sugar intake so again per 100 grams or per slice now per 100 grams the amount of energy is 388, which means it's, again, 46 calories per slice. Now, you can look at the difference in size here, and these things are that big and about a quarter of an inch thick, whereas these things are a circle of that diameter. So these are a little bit more filling when you eat them. So it's 49 Per slice of which fat is eight and a half in a hundred grams but 1.1 grams very low carbohydrates 55.8 or seven per slice seven grams and sugars are 2.9 per hundred grams so it's 0.4 grams per slice so still very very low and the thing about this is and this oats and rye both of them are much much better for you than for example white rice which is going to be absorbed very quickly oats and rye will have a lower glycemic index and that stuff will get through to your blood system much more slowly now here i just thought for interest's sake we'll go into this this compared to those two let's see where oh, here we are Energy per 100 grams is 160 calories, which doesn't sound too bad. Fat is 0.7 grams, so that's good. It's surprisingly good. Carbohydrates, 37 and a half, of which sugars, 32. So 32 grams of sugar in 100 grams, whereas this is... 2.9 in 100 grams or this is what did I say it was 0 0.7 0 0.7 2.9 or 37 38 that's why you have to look into these things so how do you measure these things now the first thing I've got to say is that in terms of cookbooks the one that really saved my life was this because it's quick it's easy and it gives you fantastic selection of different recipes that you can use so it gives you a recipe for quick brown bread it's not bread it doesn't use any flour so it doesn't have the same texture or anything else but it does mean you can have something which you can spread some butter and some cheese onto and it gives you something you can use for a snack or it gives you a roll that you can have with your bowl of soup and it shouldn't give you a blood a blood sugar spike so you've got things like that then you've got things like puddings and some of these are really good especially these chocolate fondants which end up like little chocolate cakes with gooey runny chocolate in the middle and they're delicious. Then there's the Byron Bay bars, which are, for me, when I was going out cycling, absolutely superb for little energy sort of um, things that kept me going. 
And now, of course, I can't find the uh, recipe for them, but never mind. I shouldn't be giving you all these free recipes anyway, should I? Um, but there's a huge number of different types of recipe in here. Breakfasts, lunches, um, all kinds. And it makes it easier if you've got something that you can look at which tells you the best things to eat. But as I started with it, I will mention it again, and that is not just keeping track of your carbohydrates, but keeping track of what sort of carbohydrates you should be eating. Now, this is a great little book because it goes through different kinds of item. Now it can be sugars, it can be cassava, it can be chicken Kievs. It goes through foods that are completely natural that you make yourself and it goes through foods that you buy in tins or buy in shops and it shows you which is the safest to go for. So for example if we look at um, a bean burrito, 200 grams. It shows you roughly what it should look like on your plate. So you can tell by looking at the size of it roughly what it should have. It has 60 grams of carbs. It has 414 calories. Protein, fat, saturated fat and fibre. And it goes through that for basically everything. So you've got soya milk, you've got... Uh, milkshakes made with skimmed milk powders, you've got single cream and double cream and everything is colour coordinated. You can see there's colours at the top of these pages. So that's meat, this is fruit, this is drinks. Don't understand the order they put things in but never mind. Desserts, cheese, etc etc. And not only that, It also gives you the basic sort of measures, um, carbohydrates and calories and protein, fat and so on, as a summary per item. So you can see exactly what it is you're eating, hopefully, and keep track of things. Right, so you've got all these different types of food, what you should be looking for. For me... The main thing is to try to keep track of the glycemic index of whatever you're eating. Now, Michael Mosley, bless him, said that easily digestible carbs are the baddies because they cause blood sugar spikes and the overproduction of insulin. He said slow absorption is a good thing. So the good type of carbs contain lots of fibre making them harder to absorb. Slow absorption is good. Examples include vegetables, legumes, whole grains. The trouble is, he says, it's not so easy necessarily to find out what are genuine whole grains because most food you buy is so heavily overprocessed the the grains have gone through lots of different processes themselves which makes them easier to absorb, which means you feel full for less long and that's the issue. So he says one way is to look up the glycemic index score. Things are ranked from 0 to 100, sugar being 100. So that's what you need to do, is to look up different types of food which are going to be in the lower level of glycemic index, if that makes sense. So that's the main uh, message from this silly little video really which is that look up foods that are going to have a low glycemic index so they'll absorb more slowly you will feel full for longer and when they do get converted they release their sugars into your bloodstream much more slowly which prevents a sugar rush prevents the overproduction of insulin and therefore controls your diabetes I could have just said that at the outset and it would have been a lot faster really, wouldn't it? So, that's all for now, folks. I have to say, I am very sorry that he's died because Michael Mosley was a fantastic journalist, 
and I think a delightful fellow. So to see him die in Greece, basically probably because of heat, heat exhaustion, is incredibly sad. He, there was so much more that he could have given to science and to us, the public. But these things happen, everybody has to go. The main thing is to make sure that we don't go sooner rather than later when we don't need to and it's largely a matter of being ill-informed and ill-fed. There is one last thing I must just mention and that is I said at the outset there was one other item that I would discuss and that is something I am trying to avoid like the plague now is palm oil. Now it doesn't matter if you pick up an ordinary little digestive biscuit or pretty much anything else. Um, if you look at that famous chocolate and almond spread from, I think Italy, might be France, uh, but you know the one, I mean chocolatey spread, it tastes delicious. If you look at in the ingredients, a large proportion of it, and I do mean a large proportion, is from palm oil. And palm oil is, I think, evil because whole areas of rainforest are being burned down and destroyed so that farmers can plant palm trees in the wrong habitat. They're destroying the local habitat and I don't think palm oil is necessarily very good for you, quite frankly. It's one of those things that is very useful for the manufacturing process for very highly processed foods. And the problem is, you look at almost all food people get nowadays, it is highly processed. I'm much more keen on the idea of keeping basic ingredients and making my own food. Now, I can do that because I'm an author and I spend all my time indoors and don't have to worry about going out and spending two hours a day commuting, which other people do have to do. However, with a book like uh, the one I've just shown you, the Caldesi book, which means 30 minutes to a meal, anybody can do that. I mean, 30 minutes is roughly the same time it takes to rip the packaging off a highly processed set of chicken Kievs and put them in the oven. Whether you use a real oven or an air fryer or whatever sort of oven, really. So, yep, that is the main message of today, is to go for some sort of app that shows you what the glycemic index is. Check up the glycemic index of the food you're, foods you're eating and try to move to a lower glycemic index at the same time as cutting out sugars and carbohydrates generally if you can. And I think that's a pretty good message. And then the secondary message is avoid palm oil if you can because it is not good stuff. There you go, there you have it. That's me done for today. Um, Nothing else to say apart from if you enjoyed this, don't forget, go down the bottom, like, subscribe. If you really want to support the channel, hit the Patreon button. And apart from that, I'll speak to you soon. Take care and keep safe. Bye.